made the trip to Ohio State, as you know, to visit my grandson number three who graduated from Ohio State University. Uh, as I mentioned before, he was accepted and offered scholarships and stipends to a top three university in the country in civil engineering. <laughs> Come to find out, he was summa cum laude, and he was number one in the entire class of civil engineering. And he's a model student. I went to the presentation, and as Toastmasters, all of us would have noticed how badly those speakers were. <laughs> First of all, they got up there and read the paragraph or so, then she up and gave a big smile. Then she read another paragraph, a big smile. I mean, it's so phony for a seasoned <laughs> educator is embarrassing. And then the president got up there, and he was worse. What he did, he stuck his head in the book, so to speak, and never looked up. <laughs> and they wonder why people go to sleep at commencement exercises. Mm -hmm. Now contrast that to what happened to Will Ferrell. You might have heard Will Ferrell made a commencement exercise, got an honorary degree from USC. Will Ferrell, the comedian, SC graduate, baseball player, funny man. Well, he got up there and he started singing, and he can't sing. He said, I will always love you to the student body. And so, of course, that brought them down. You know. It's nice to be told your love. And he told everybody, well, I will always love you. Yeah. And then he went on to say, this is not the first honorary degree I ever got. I've got endless number of honorary degrees. And he mentioned trade schools and fly-by-night schools. End up saying, I even have an honorary PhD from Trump University. <laughs> and the whole audience could, you know, was listening to every single word. Now that is a commencement speech. <laughs> okay, so that's what I learned and always learned if you go to commencement exercise. Most of them are very boring. Those presidents could use Toastmasters training. Then I gave up. Uh, uh, this, this second category would be more an educational tip, something I need to work on. About a month ago, I lost my older sister, and uh, everybody knew that she was not my favorite relative. So a priest got up there and spoke, then he introduced her son who spoke, and then he opened up the floor. Nobody raised their hands. And so I raised my hand, and I'm surprised everybody didn't fall off the chair. Because <laughs> they're probably thinking, what's he going to do, throw the trash can at her? And I got up there and gave a nice chronological sequence of her life. It went over really well. Then I sat down. Big mistake. What I like about this club, we acknowledge each other. Number one in acknowledging is Sally, who hasn't been for a while because she's under the weather. And Liz has become very good at that. She acknowledges everybody and talks to them. And I'm not very good at that. In that respect, I'm shy. Some people say I'm too aggressive sometimes in other areas. But acknowledge that I can't. I, have, I feel like I'm imposing on people or whatever. So what I should have done after I gave a little talk about my sister, I should have offered my condolences to my nephew Dan, her son, her daughter, Patsy, and their partners, Riley and Kathy. It would be a nice gesture to acknowledge them. I know when I go to a party with a family function, and Kenny in particular in her family is really outgoing, and my number four grandson, they go around and acknowledge everybody. And you feel like you're, you're something important, worthy of acknowledgement. And then the second speech I give it for my uh, grandson James, number three grandson from Ohio State, it was twice as long as what I gave here. One criticism I got when I give the speech here, you should have spent more time in the pictures. Well, I try to stay within time limits. And there the presentation was about twice as long it went off extremely well. Uh, as I mixed around the crowd, people I didn't even know came up and they said, great, great speech. It was a chronological sequence of James going from high school to university to grad school. And then we're going to get ready to leave. I sort of just stood there waiting for my son and my daughter. They were acknowledged people. I just stood there. I should have gone around there and greeted my grandson, the graduate, and my other grandson, Michael, who I see rarely who treats me more like a fraternity brother than a, uh, uh, than a grandfather. And I should have been, my, my, I told my daughter-in-law, thank you for the party. I need work there. When I joined Toastmasters, I joined almost 30 years ago to give a five minute pitch at my daughter's wedding. I was doing lectures three hours a night at Long Beach City College on technology. I could talk for three hours 
with an equation, with the homework, and so on and so forth. But a speech at a wedding is different, and I knew I need help. And I got into Toastmasters, I noticed that I needed more help. For one thing, when I lecture, people say, you speak too fast, I can't understand what you're saying. I can't do have time to be And I respond, well, let, tell me to re repeat myself. I don't mind that. So that's an area I needed help, and I think I improved somewhat. A second thing I needed was I tend to favor my left side looking at people. And now I've learned to look at the right side and this side. But what I still need help with is acknowledging people. Even coming here, I like the way Liz does it. I like the way Sally does it. They go on their way to give you a hug, and that makes you feel good. Even at family functions when I leave, I don't do it like I just said. And so this should be sort of a message of learning experience. Learn to acknowledge people as you enter a home and when you leave a home. You can't acknowledge everybody, but at least the host, maybe the honored person. And I think that will help you improve your relationship with everybody. Mr. Toastmaster.